Grande Punto is a typical Italian car. Comfort here is clearly sacrificed for low cost, so one should not be surprised at the high trunk niche, simple suspension strut mounts, the lack of a normal wear and the simplest body seals. In the main market, in Italy, this is not so important. Hot Italian guys prefer low price and good looks, and everything else is secondary in their climate. But what happens to the Grande Punto in our climate and when exploited by our hot guys and girls, of course. The story today will be about the very first generation of cars in this body. We will start with this very body, and in the second part of the review we will move on to engines and transmissions. The Italians were among the first to understand that galvanization is the key to a good perception of the car. And besides, a good reason to save on painting. Even the first Fiat Tipo from the 90s pleased the owners with total galvanization. So all exterior panels of Grande Punto are made of galvanized steel. But Fiat Grande Punto does not have plastic body elements, the company did not follow in the footsteps of the French. Most owners believe that galvanizing is a panacea for any body diseases, but they are, of course, wrong. First, economical Italians use galvanized metal only for external panels. This means that in the wheel arches and on the underbody, the steel is protected only by paint, and not the best. And secondly, zinc is not eternal. Despite the fact that the oldest cars barely stepped over the threshold of 12 years, finding a copy with through corrosion can be quite easy. You just need to know where to look. For example, in a niche behind the front mudguard, there is almost certainly corrosion. Often the edge of the wing has already been eaten. It happens that both the arch and the front part of the threshold are corroded to holes. The problem is that two negative factors are combined at once, which destroy the metal protected in this way. The first is sandblasting from under the front wheels, which literally cleans the paintwork of the threshold and wheel arch. The second is the design of the original mudguard, which creates a pocket in which sand and dirt accumulate and into which water flies. Metal, not protected by paint, is held for some time by zinc, but it cannot withstand a humid environment, the surface film is destroyed and the metal burns out. Well, then corrosion goes further and further on the rise. Sometimes the damage zone extends a good 30 to 50 centimeters from the wheel. At the rear of the threshold, the paintwork just peels off. In the rear arches hides the second center of corrosion. The reason is the same, sandblasting and mud pockets. Completely peeling thresholds are also not uncommon, and they talk about the extremely disregard for the owners of their cars. Visible rust on the doors can be considered a verdict on the body. It manifests itself when there is very little zinc left on the panels and usually a fringe is already hanging at the bottom of the door, and a swamp is splashing inside the door. Fortunately, this is a rare scenario, but the hood cover corroding from the inside is, rather, the rule. The galvanizing of the metal is one-sided, but on the inside the hood frame violates the integrity of the paintwork, and the condensate completes the job. On the bottom, the seams of the side members are at risk, and especially the seams of the front end of the floor reinforcement along the central tunnel. They are in the zone of influence of sandblasting from under the front wheels and are poorly protected by mastic. Also pay attention to the condition of the floors in the area where the cable channel of the pipelines is attached. It is often clogged with dirt and serves as a catalyst for destructive processes. But even in the most severe cases, there is still no talk of serious damage, and outside rust will show itself mainly in places where galvanic couples appear, for example, next to the rearview mirror mount. It may appear near the plastic lining, under which sand and moisture accumulate, or where the rear light rubs a hole in the rear fender paintwork. The bumpers of the car are quite strong, and they stand well in the mounts. But the headlights and windshield are elements that require regular replacement or maintenance. The windshield, after five years of operation in Russia, is usually worn out and glares unpleasantly at night. Moreover, original Pilkington in terms of quality does not differ from Chinese ones in terms of quality, however, at a price too. And yes, it was made in China. With headlights, the situation is a little more complicated. The optics that Valio and Magneti Marelli, the latter make almost half of the car, by the way, are easily overridden and also have a very weak electric corrector located inside the headlight. Moreover, Valio also burns contacts, and lenses fail quite quickly. The price of optics is quite sparing, but it is disassembled and repaired very poorly, the headlight is assembled on sealant and is not very technologically advanced. The rear lights are generally quite successful, 
but they are flooded with rain from poor sealing of the upper edge or from the rear window washer hose, which here is laid a little strange and poorly made. And often it also causes a flood either in the area of backslash U200B backslash U200B fuse box in the cabin, or in the trunk area. Salon. Salon and body mechanics, unfortunately, already cause a few problems. A typical breakdown on a punto is a broken trunk lock. Prudent Italians even put a lever on the lock to open it from the inside, and make a hole for the rope on the lever so that they don't climb inside each time until the lock is repaired. The lock is led down by a flimsy plastic case and bad microswitches. If the light in the trunk lights up at random, then this is the first sign that soon the lock will not be able to open in a normal way. The locks of the side doors are more reliable, but they are also mediocre. Unsuccessful tension of the external handle drive cable often causes the lock to not open either from the inside or from the outside. Well, or not blocked. Moreover, the fastening of the cable to the handle is also torn. If this is not enough for you, then the power window cables also break quite often, especially if you, for example, smoke or like to breathe fresh air outside. On three doors, the cables are waiting for you even in the drive for reclining the backrests of the front seats. It usually breaks in its lower part. Fortunately, it is relatively easy to fix it here. You can use any cable, for example, from a VAZ clutch drive and connect it to an Italian tip. The door button block is a rather weak thing, it is afraid of water, and there are also purely mechanical key failures. Therefore, do not lean on the armrest of the door with all your weight and try to open the doors less often in the rain. Of the unusual breakdowns, one can note the breaking fastenings of the sun visors and the very early subsidence of the floor carpet. Fortunately, it is thin enough here, and the problem is hardly noticeable. Steering play here is also common. The Italians used a strange way of connecting two parts of the shaft, and in early machines the gap in the connection is on the order of a millimeter, which does not have the best effect on ease of operation. But the seats in the Fidic are surprisingly strong, although the quality of the fabric is not outstanding, it gets dirty well. The steering wheel trim, cover, and manual transmission handle lose any semblance of a decent appearance already by a run of a hundred and a half hundred thousand kilometers. The steering wheels are often sheathed in leather, like the manual transmission handle, or painted if the car is being prepared for sale by outbidding. Electrician. Here you can't call the car a model of reliability either. A typical problem is cracks in the generator housing. Denso generators sin with this, in which the mounting bracket is rather weak, and any vibration of the auxiliary drive belt can break it. Magneti Marelli generators work noticeably worse, their current collectors last less, and the windings burn more often, and the bearings die earlier but their bodies are solid. The throttle body is also from Magneti Marelli, a fragile thing. The gearbox inside is frail and plastic, loves cleaning and lubrication. In which case, only a replacement helps, so if the idle speed is uneven, and the engine somehow responds uncertainly to the gas pedal, it is worth checking this element. The steering column plume is also often frustrating. If the headlights are on when the ignition is on and you can't turn them off, it's most likely already slightly damaged. If with the buttons on the steering wheel, the car does not respond to them, also get ready to change it or repair it. Well, if the airbag error is on, then you need to change it urgently. The steering wheel position sensor is needed here for the correct operation of the electric power steering. The price of the part is about 7,000 rubles, but it will have to be changed quite often. After 60 to 80,000 mileage it will require replacement. Then its resource usually does not exceed 40,000 kilometers. Otherwise the euro begins to please with different efforts when turning right and left, simply refuses to help or annoys in some other way. The cause of numerous failures can also be a penny switch on the brake pedal. If it fails on a car with a manual transmission, then this will only affect the operation of the euro, but if the seal speed robot is installed, then the number of problems increases markedly. And this penny part breaks at the most inopportune moment, it is enough just to hit the pedal too hard or sharply. The windshield wiper motor is corroded from the inside. It is especially bad for cars that have been standing idle for a long time. They also flood the overhead niche a little. The multimedia system with Blue and Me turned out to be buggy and inconvenient to use. And in general, multimedia in Grande Punto is SOSO both in terms of sound and capabilities. Brake system. The brakes on small and mischievous cars in Italy must be good, mountains, you know. So there are few complaints about the design. To begin with, 
the caliper guide seals are weak and require regular replacement. And when they are destroyed, the caliper wedges. On the back of most cars there are trouble-free drums, but there is a nuance, they have a very interesting self-advanced mechanism for the pads. And most car services cannot or do not want to understand how it works. The system with a ratchet and a closer spring turned out to be complicated for Russian services, and for most cars the rear brakes simply do not work and the handbrake is only operable in a narrow range between the wedges and does not hold. Read the manuals and remember, the gap adjuster is supplied as a spare part in a not quite functional form, it requires adjustment after installing the pads. Suspension. The suspension is comfortable enough for such a small car and, in general, has no special frills. A resource is not too large, and there is no excess strength cars with gasoline engines will cover their 100,000 kilometers before the first major repairs. Repair is relatively inexpensive, and high-quality components for this are available. The main problem of the chassis is the low ground clearance and the low position of the front subframe. And in the case of installing spacers, the drive resource suffers greatly. Steering. The steering here is simple and generally reliable. The Euro is a little capricious, but basically the steering position sensor fails. Weak tie rods and rack design are a problem mainly when operating outside the city or traveling on broken roads. In large cities and neat drivers, there are no special problems at least up to runs of 150 to 200,000, and small taps do not lead to any negative consequences. Transmission. Grande Punto manual boxes are almost trouble-free, although the resource of the gearshift cables, lever bushings and clutch cable could be higher. On German cars, these nodes usually do not cause trouble up to runs of at least 200,000 kilometers, and on Italian cars, repairs are possible after 100. The only serious danger is that the box itself is leaking from all the cracks. The oil level must be monitored in both directions, it leaves both through the glands of the drives and through the seals of the switching mechanism rods. It is best not to forget to check the level at each MOT, and change it every 50,000, so it is more reliable. With a sharp decrease in oil between maintenance, it is worth immediately replacing the current oil seals. Transmission. The main problem with these gearboxes is that they really lack sixth gear. On the track, the engine speed is extremely high, already at 110 km per hour. The speed is kept at about 3,800 to 4,500, depending on the engine and gearbox. A six-speed gearbox is mated to the turbo engine, the flywheel is dual mass. The clutch is noticeably more expensive than you might expect. A complete set of Valio with a flywheel, from 34,000 rubles, a basket and a disc, from 12,000, this is two or three times more than the price of spare parts for conventional 8-valve engines of 1.2 and 1.4 liters. If you like to drive at low speed and very low speeds, then get ready to repair or change the flywheel regularly. The plastic bushings of its springs are not particularly strong, after hundreds of thousands of runs, the flywheel can knock at any time. A true Fiat fan is always sure that his car is like an Alfa Romeo, but cheaper. Well, about cheaper, it's not always. If you have seal speed, then you join the world of expensive cars. In a sense, expensive and difficult to operate. Not that this robot was so terrible, but it was simply not created for our operating conditions. Sometimes a doubt creeps in, did the hot Italian guys conduct tests at low temperatures, or limited themselves to something around minus 5 degrees, believing that at a lower temperature everyone would still sit at home and drink warm wine. The second disadvantage of seal speed is the cost of repairs. Dealers of the brand and even unofficial, but specialized services, buy very strong sums from the unfortunate owners of this design for eliminating any failures. And they act mainly by block replacement. The elimination of minor problems results in tens of thousands of rubles, which is more like some kind of premium car, rather than an economical B-class baby. What is the problem image? With diagnostics and adaptation, it is clear that it is not available everywhere, and not everyone can do it on their own. But this is a small part of the problems. Obvious resource troubles are an electric pump and a pressure accumulator. They work in conjunction and both have a finite resource. Moreover, if the accumulator dies, then the pump will probably follow due to the increase in load. The funny thing is that the pump is perfectly repaired, the most typical repair is the replacement of the brushes of the electric motor, only 250 rubles for consumables and 300 for work. But officially no one wants to repair the part, and you will be offered to buy a new one, and it costs from 30 to 50,000 rubles. 
the accumulator is also most often offered to be immediately replaced with a new one. The price of the part will be from 8 to 15,000, although they are successfully restored, since there is enough nitrogen under pressure in Russia, but all this costs ridiculously, from 1,000 rubles. Of the seal speed attachments, potentiometers require regular replacement, for which they ask for a fantastic 18,000 in the original. The price of a part from alternative manufacturers is only a couple of thousand. Three more solenoid valves are responsible for the operation of the box. For each they ask for 13,000 rubles, and in the original it is Magneti Marelli QPB 10 CK.0096073. We rejoice, an alternative in the form of 71719391, 71753760, 71753781, and even Chinese with Cherry qqqr 512 e 1707023 will cost two to three times cheap. Wiring is usually damaged by careless repairs, but it can be restored using new connectors from VAZs and other cars. In addition to the problems of attached elements of the robot, there are certain problems with the internal structure. Firstly, hydraulic cuffs do not last long. The original parts are made of very heat-loving materials, so when starting at minus 20, the car will not go until it is fully warmed up. And an attempt to start ahead of time will cause hydraulic leaks and a box error. For Fiat lovers in the north, there are repair cuffs made of frost-resistant materials and even special oils, but winter operation in the north has been ordered for the original car. In any case, even if you do everything right, warm up in winter or avoid driving in cold weather at all, the shift rods will wear out over time, the load on them is high. The total resource of the structure before the appearance of the first serious problems is about 100,000 kilometers. The first problems will be electrical, primarily related to potentiometers and sensors. If they are eliminated, then usually the hydraulics work quite well up to 150,000 mileage. Then leaks and pressure surges will begin, which, together with other factors, begin to finish off the structure. Then the pump and the hydraulic accumulator fail, the cuffs are damaged, and even the technological plugs of the mechanism housing can be knocked out. Of course, all this harms both the clutch and the synchronizers of the box, so the mechanics will also suffer. In addition to the driving test, when buying a car with such a box, it is recommended to pay attention to the transmission status lamp. If there are winks in motion, it means that there is not enough pressure, and repairs will soon be needed. Another test can be carried out without even moving. You just need to warm up the car. When the driver's door is open, a quiet whistle is heard, this is triggered by the electric pump of the system. If it is not heard, then the car will not go. Well, if the car is started and warmed up, then the time between pump starts should be at least 15 minutes. If the pump turns on every minute, then most likely it will fail soon because the accumulator is not working, or the leaks in the system have reached a critical level. Motors With the fiery hearts of the fire series, this Fiat Grande Punto is lucky. I mean, this series of motors is still simple and reliable, the difficulties began later when multi-air and other tricks were added. And the original, cast iron, turned out to be remarkably durable, and even the 1.4-liter turbo engines turned out to be one of the best European downsized engines. Unlike some. In general, the FIRE, fully integrated robotized engine, series was modular, and it appeared back in 1985 on the Auto Bianchi Y10. Fully automated production of motors at that time was rare, and they tried to reflect this feature in the name. The volume of engines of the family is from 0.8 to 1.4 liters, the basic version was a liter. Over the years of production, the design has been fine-tuned, and 8-valve and 16-valve engines before the advent of multi-air are the pinnacle of their development their most reliable and successful options. The most common engines are 8-valve, with a volume of 1.2 and 1.4 liters. This is the same ideally simple motor, which is also quite powerful. 77 forces is quite enough for a small car for city traffic. On the highway, of course, driving with such an engine is sad, but economical. The resource before overhaul by the standards of such small units is simply huge, up to 300,000 kilometers. True, 8-valve 1.4-liter engines, after a hundred or one and a half hundred thousand mileage, begin to eat up oil, but its consumption is no more than half a liter per thousand, and is mainly caused by rather low gear ratios of gearboxes. As I wrote above, in typical highway modes, up to 110, the revolutions rise to 4,500, and this already greatly increases the load on the pistons and liners, 
increases the volume of crankcase gases and the requirements for the operation of oil scraper race. In urban modes, oil consumption may be completely absent, but when traveling on the highway, it is worth making a rule to control the level after each refueling with gasoline. If the motor is broken, no problem. It is easily repaired. It is designed for village mechanics and is simple. Even if the timing belt breaks, the valves do not bend, although at present the belt resource is small. It must be changed every 50 to 60,000 kilometers. The phase shifter is reliable, it will pass 150,000 easily. The oil pump did not let us down either, and there are no hydraulic lifters at all, you only need to pick up washers in the gap every 60,000. But the crankcase ventilation system is not particularly well organized, oil leaks on cross-country motors occur regularly, the exhaust hose breaks on the air filter housing. The throttle here is electronic, and, like all Magneti Marelli designs, is not particularly reliable. And their control electronics and wiring are also not the best, injector connectors, ignition modules and everything else can fail at the most inopportune moment. The resource of lambda sensors is small, and the service life of catalysts in our conditions is no more than 150,000 kilometers. When using low-quality oils or long drain intervals, surprises are possible with coking of oil channels in the cylinder head and problems with camshaft lubrication, as well as pressure leakage at the joints of the oil line between the camshaft bed and its cover. During any work with valves, be sure to change the sealing rings, for example, when replacing valve stem seals, they are consumable here. It's better to change them together with the timing belt after 150,000 runs, if you don't want to overhaul the cylinder head at the same time with replacing the guides and repairing the valves. And if the camshaft cams look worn, then you will have to urgently figure out what and where does not work. The cylinder head and its problems are the main factor limiting the life of the engine, the piston group lasts noticeably longer. The low-mounted aluminum alloy crankcase proved too brittle and too low for our roads. It is often broken, so crankcase protection on this machine is very desirable, at the same time the engine compartment will become cleaner. Do not expect global breakdowns, after 200,000 mileage, most likely, the cylinder head will need to be repaired and the power and ignition system will have to be monitored after 150. Even quite serious breakdowns are possible, but the motor will try to carry you to the last. The more powerful 1.4-liter 16-valve engine is just as strong, but likes to eat less oil. It has less revs on the highway, but when the timing belt breaks, the valves bend here. Replacement of oil seals and all rollers is required every 50,000. The rest is the same wonderful motor, simple and resourceful. It differs only in a slightly denser layout, the presence of hydraulic lifters and a long catalyst resource, more than 200,000 kilometers. The turbocharged version is also surprisingly good. Yes, it is a little afraid of detonation, especially 120 horsepower versions with early firmware, and, like all turbo engines, requires careful maintenance. The turbine control mechanisms are not particularly reliable, the hot part of the turbine cracks, as does the exhaust manifold, the pneumatic valves leak, and the rubber parts of the intake will require regular pressure testing after five to six years of service, they are afraid of oil and dirt. The rubber seal rings will require replacement, but other than these features of any turbo engine, everything is in order. The mechanics of the engine are strong and hold the moment well. Even 240 horsepower engine options have a decent resource, the safety margin of the design turned out to be what you need. A turbocharged engine has no oil burner and such machines in real operation are even more economical than atmospheric ones. Grande Punto is a car not without surprises, but in general it is quite high quality. Services fail mainly, there is a corny lack of professional and competent specialists in motors, chassis and electrics of the car. Even a few specialized workshops strive to keep prices higher, but the quality of repair of complex elements remains not too high. The main problem of the Grande Punto is that the owner will eventually have to deal with any malfunction himself. On a new car, this is not so scary, but with age, the number of complex complex mechanical and electrical failures increases, which means that the cost of repairs in the service increases sharply. This is all the more offensive because the price of spare parts is generally low, and the body of the car is quite long play, and the design itself is very, very economical. If you are ready to find information about repairs yourself, understand how to get spare parts, and you have in mind a suitable service that loves Italian cars, then you can take Grande Punto. And best of all, of course, 
with a 16-valve engine, the chassis of the car is decent, and you want more power. Just try to avoid robots unless you're a fan of complex and technically elegant designs.